for inviting me to be uh, to be here tonight with you. This is my second time. I was here a few years ago uh, speaking at Astro Assembly about NASA's Cassini mission. I was just really impressed with the hospitality of the club and also just the really beautiful facility you have, the Clark Refractor, and really just feel like this place exudes history and very high level astronomy and commitment. So it's a real pleasure and thrill for me tonight to be here. Uh, so I want to thank the club and Bob Napier. I also want to thank Jim Bell, whose two recent books are now being used to prop up the projector. <laughs> Jim, Jim is a planetary scientist at Cornell University. Uh, he's also the lead scientist for the imaging team for the Mars rover. So uh, he's a very important uh, member of the, of the Mars rover team. And he sent me a lot of the pictures that you're going to see tonight, although I've also downloaded a lot of other pictures myself on the web. For those of you who get Sky and Tell or want to buy it on the newsstand, our cover story this month is, is about Mars, and Jim wrote the cover story, a really good article, a lot of which I'll be talking about tonight. So maybe after you hear my talk, Maybe you don't even need to read his article, but it's actually a very good article. Jim is um, also a former skyscraper. He grew yeah, up is he? Yes. I was going to mention, he grew up in this area, and he's a really big Boston Red Sox fan. And he told me a few months ago that he's tried to convince NASA to get the rovers to program them so that, you know, on Mars they scroll out in the sand. Go Red Sox. <laughs> but unfortunately, NASA hasn't, hasn't given him permission to do that. So uh, maybe we can all write our congressman and say, let Jim scroll out, go NASA, uh, or go Red Sox on Mars. So I want to thank him for providing a lot of the pictures. And I, of course, want to thank all of you for coming tonight. So I really appreciate you being here. So just a quick outline of the talk. Um, I'm just going to give you know a very brief summary of, of a li about some of what we know about Mars from earlier missions. Then we're going to go into the 3D. I'm going to first talk about the Mars Pathfinder and Sojourner missions. Probably many of you remember that from 1997. Talk briefly about an orbiter that's done phenomenal, re uh, phenomenal work, Mars Global <laughs> Surveyor. Then I'm going to talk, most of the talk is about spirit and opportunity. I'm going to go through spirit first then opportunity, then near the end I'll, I'll show, a few, show you a few 3D pictures from Mars Phoenix. That was the mission that landed in May of last year and concluded a few months ago. And then we'll go back to non-3D pictures because I'm talking about missions that haven't launched yet. And we'll just talk briefly about what's coming up next with Mars exploration. <laughs> So I want to just start off by showing a couple pictures from the Viking orbiters dating back to the 1970s. Now it was known prior to Viking that Mars is a very dry, barren planet, but thanks to orbiters, first Mariner 9 in 1971-72, and later Viking 1 and Viking 2, we know that Mars at one time in its past had, where there was very strong evidence that it had liquid water flowing across its surface. You just look at these features from these Viking pictures and the most straightforward Occam's razor conclusion you could draw is some kind of liquid flowed across Mars sometime in the distant past. These look very much, for example, like river deltas or you know tributary networks right here on Earth. But today, of course, Earth is, you know, Mars is a barren planet. It's even drier than the Sahara Desert. But what's exciting here is if Mars once had liquid water, it raises the possibility that maybe sometime in the distant past, Mars had some form of life. Because on Earth, everywhere we find liquid water, we also find life. So the strategy of NASA that, that was formulated about 10 years ago for the, this new Mars exploration program could be summed up in three words right here. Follow the water. The idea was to send rovers to sites on Mars where there was evidence that liquid water once existed on the surface. So Spirit was eventually, they decided to send Spirit, the first rover, to Gusev Crater. This crater, by the way, is almost exactly the size of Connecticut, so just a little bit bigger than Rhode Island. And, you, and this picture is that pretty straightforward. Looks like there's a river here. This is actually flowing <laughs> downhill. And you would expect that water would just collect inside the crater and form a lake. Very straightforward. 
evidence there that this was once a lake on, on ancient Mars. The other location for opportunity is on the other side of the planet uh, called Meridiani Planum. This is a broad plain roughly the size of Kansas or Oklahoma. And from orbit, there was a, a mission I'll talk about, uh, briefly about called Mars Global Surveyor that had a spectrometer and the spectra of the surface shows this mineral called hematite where on Earth many different forms of hematite form in liquid water. So here you had kind of geological or morphological evidence for water. Here we have chemical evidence for water. So these are why these two sites were chosen for spirit and opportunity. Uh, so as I mentioned here, follow the water Think of the two rovers as miniature robotic field geologists. They're actually, they're, they're actually not, they're about the size of golf carts, they're really not that small. They carry each three different spectrometers for measuring the chemical composition of rocks and soils, and a suite of nine cameras. The main two are the panoramic cameras. This is the one where Jim Bell is the lead scientist. These are at the top of the mast here. These give a resolution about the same as the human eye. So a lot of these pictures I'm going to show you with pan cam, this is pretty close to what you would see on Mars. But there's also a series of smaller cameras down below for uh, navigating around rocks and other hazards. Uh, I'll show you some pictures from those cameras. And some of the coolest pictures with very strong 3D effects, I expect to hear a few oohs and ahs, comes from a little camera at the end of the instrument arm called the microscopic Im imager for looking at rocks and soils up close. You might also notice there's a little grinding tool here called the RAT for rock abrasion tool that can actually grind into rocks so that the instruments can study the insides of the rock and not the kind of more boring dust that covers many Martian rocks. Okay, this just gives you an idea here of the scale. This is a model of uh, Sojourner, the rover that went to Mars in 1997, and this is a full-scale model here of Spirit and Opportunity. So you can see they're pretty good sized. Can I interrupt just for a moment? Yes. How much larger will the next one be? Much bigger. I'll show you the picture of the very last slide of the talk. Okay. Much bigger. Much much bigger and much better. Okay, so has everybody got your uh, 3D glasses on here? And as I, I'll, I told the amateur telescope makers of Boston when I gave my talk there a few weeks ago, you all really look like a bunch of geeks right now. <laughs> I call them the geek glasses. Okay, so this is the first 3D, and for now, for like the next 45 minutes, they're all 3D pictures. Okay, so this is a really cool picture um, showing the landing site for Mars Pathfinder. And I remember, you know, I was working actually at Astronomy Magazine at the time when this landed, and I was with one of my colleagues in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan in Sault Ste. Marie, uh, you know, watching the TV coverage of the landing and then going on the web, and it was just really cool. Um, so this shows where it landed. It's in a broad plain called Eris Vallis that's actually thought to be an outflow channel. This is an area where sometime in the distant past, we don't know how long ago, but we're probably talking millions of years, there was a powerful vast flood that flowed across the Martian landscape. So this is actually a flood plain and the investigation of, of uh, Pathfinder and the rover Sojourner actually supported that, that conclusion. You can see in the distance here, this is not actually a hill, this is actually the rim of an impact crater called Big Crater, a little over a mile away. And, and looking in the other direction were two mountains about a mile away. These